We often get this notion that paleontology is very neat. Hey look, we found a fossil. We found it in this rock, which was X amount of years old, and it had these little features, which means we can just pop it into this group. Same is true for many transitional fossils. We know that this group and that group are related, and hey, look at that, we've just found a fossil with features of both groups, so it must represent a missing link much like evolution's poster boy, Archaeopteryx. Sometimes though, paleontologists find a transitional fossil and go, what the f is that? So I've spoken a lot about what a weird time the Triassic was for reptiles. Archosaurus especially dominated and got experimental in the wake of the Permian mass extinction event and many of these reptiles ended up being a mismatch of different features, like today's topic, smock, well, well, smock, well, well, smock, smock, well, well, ski, smock, well, well, ski. Smock, well, ski. <laughs> smock, which is Polish for dragon, was discovered and described back in 2008 near the Polish village of Lissowice, in a unit from the late Triassic. Unlike with Herrerasaurus, people seemed quite certain at the time that this was the earliest known theropod, the group of dinosaurs that are bipedal and mostly carnivorous, with notable similarities in its brain case to dinosaurs like Allosaurus. Soon other features were found that put this into question though. First, why don't we start off with what we do know. Standing at around 16 to 20 feet in length, Smock had serrated teeth for munching on other animals, an antorbital fenestra and a fourth trochanter on the femur, which would attach the muscle going along the tail that brings its legs back, so it was definitely an archosaur. This big boy also had very long forelimbs for a bipedal archosaur. Not long enough to comfortably move around on all fours, but long nonetheless. Now, Smock was actually the largest predator in all of Europe and one of the largest in the world during the late Triassic, with coprolite samples suggesting that this thing could actually munch bone with those gnashes. There was also a really wide variety of bones found in these coprolites, from fish to temnospondyls and isinodonts, meaning that this was actually quite a generalist predator. Now for the confusing parts. Again, the brain case shows similarities with later theropods showing that it may have had a more avian kind of intelligence when compared to Pseudosuchians, as well as a groove on the ilium near the acetabulum, which is really only seen in theropods. But whilst we're at the hips, things are very off. Now, Smock stands upright, and you often hear that the defining characteristic of a dinosaur is having hips that allow the legs to be held underneath them, but it's much more than that. Dinosaurs have a hole in their acetabulum that you can see right through, and more pronounced femoral heads and necks, meaning that the thigh bone can fit more securely into the hip socket without the torso just sliding down, just like us mammals have. This is the defining characteristic of a dinosaur, since no other reptile ever evolved this convergent feature. But some reptiles still held their legs underneath them just by different means. Some Pseudosuchians, such as the Aetosaurs and Rawasuchians, developed a ridge on the ilium which actually angled the acetabulum downwards so that the pelvis sat on top of the femur. This is known as the pillar erect structure and evolved independently from dinosaurs, being the defining characteristic of Rawasuchians. So, defining characteristic of a dinosaur and defining characteristic of a Rawasuchian. Which one did Smock have? Well, it was the Rawasuchian characteristic. So if you want to break it down simply, Smock wasn't a dinosaur, despite how it looked. To be fair, the Triassic was full of Pseudosuchians that looked remarkably dinosaur-like, including many bipedal ones. Considering there were already defensive dinosaurs before this guy too, his odds of joining the dino club are pretty slim. But at the same time, many scientists argue that it's not that simple, especially when considering how many dinosaur traits Smock actually had. Now, personally, I subscribe to the Rausukian school of thought, since the defining characteristics has always been about them hips. Maybe all those other features were just convergently evolved. 
hell, maybe a new group should be made for Smark altogether. But what do you think? Is this actually a dinosaur and we should rethink how we define one, or maybe just make an exception to the rule? Or were Rausukians a lot more diverse than we actually think? I really love reading your discussions down in the comments, so please keep them coming. Also, if you haven't already, please check out the link in the description to my Patreon page where you can find out how to get access to lots of cool benefits. But in the meantime, I'll catch you next time.